welcome back to hopefully the last installment of the anyone can build a rebuild a motor finally got it all put together put back into the Jeep um, it's not not done yet um, I had my son help me because of those you know those two high bolts up there the two high bolts that are up right just a little below the studging actually on this side you can see where the little nub sticks out um, and then it goes all the way back to that little, you can see the edge of the washer right there. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm getting ready to put that part on and get him out of the way. Um, what we found was, you know, alignment, getting it back in and getting it aligned with the transmission and everything is kind of hard. What we found was the easiest thing was to, you know, get a jack under the transmission and get it up a little bit. Get your motor down we actually went below the motor mounts a little bit <clears throat> and then i was able to push or lift on the front of the motor to get the angle correct and then on these two wings um you know on this motor there's those two wings on each side um and those have the little uh, alignment studs but they're also bolt holes so if you can get those well we've started with the left side um, i'm just on this side because you can see it better uh, with the light and everything uh, so you got your transmission lines here, and then there's that first wing right there. But we got that one aligned uh, first, and then you're able to just thread that bolt in there. Because um, those two bolts you can get to pretty easily. Uh, this one over here is a little bit hard because these transmission lines are in the way. So one of you have to hold that out of the way, and then you can get it in. But uh, once you got those two aligned, then everything else you know, should be centered up, right? And then, um, then you can go for those two hard ones that are at the top up here. There's one on each side of the block. So... Um, those were the ones where, uh, for this side, we actually use every extension we have. It ends up being about about three foot of extension. And on that side, we just take one of them off, so two and a half feet or so. And um, right now, it's just putting it back together. So I'm going to start putting things on, and then I'll, I'll come back when I'm ready to start it up. brand new oil because we just you know, took the head off the week before. So we're just going to reuse this. I can do it without spilling too much. Okay, finally got the Jeep back from the dealer. Um, took us a little while to get it over there and back. Um, we do need a new battery, but we weren't going to buy anything um, else for it if we couldn't get it started. So, one of the problems was, is of course, that, that cam sensor. If you do a lot of reading on it, uh, the toothpick trick just was not, you know, and getting it realigned. Uh, you put this uh, back on top dead center using your mark on your balancer. And then, you know, you got to be on the compression stroke. Then you put the toothpick in and put your cam sensor and um, back in. Then plug it back out. One thing we forgot was we forgot to bring the wire from the crankshaft sensor all the way around and forgot to plug that in. So that was one reason why it wasn't starting. The other, of course, was that. And most of the forums say that putting it in manually will get it running enough to get it to the dealer. Not in our case. But that's because we also had one more problem. So uh, it wasn't just that. But we did take it there. 125 bucks. They reprogrammed everything. And it starts up now. Um, the other problem we had was there's still a little bit of an exhaust leak, he said, after he got done over here. Um, but evidently I didn't tighten down everything right or or something. But my um, exhaust and manifold, there was a little bit of a leak there causing a vacuum leak, which was one of the other reasons why we were having trouble getting it um, started. So double check over here. Make sure you got everything back tightened up, proper specs and everything. And then your camshaft sensor, and you should be good. Um, we'll buy a new battery. Today, I'm going to read in my book to um, 
I'm going to read in the book today to see about the break-in periods and stuff and, and follow that today with just this old battery. And then um, I'll have her buy a new battery if it seems to continue to work. But let me give my wife the key and we'll start it up and see. Still kind of has a little bit of bad sound, but it I, once it gets started, it idles out and it seems to run pretty well. <clears throat> So there it is, put back together and running. So I guess it is true anybody can rebuild a motor. Just have to learn a little bit. And luckily it didn't cost too much at the dealer for my mistake over here with the exhaust. All right, well, thanks for watching. And uh, comment, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff at the bottom. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video.